Um, one of the things that I've really enjoyed about red and yellow over the years, and that is that every class produces quirky people. Now, quirky, I define as being able to produce the unexpected. And our next speaker defines herself as a quirky marketer. And I'd like you to give a nice warm welcome to Ms. Victoria Swarwood. Okay. Hi guys, thanks Bully for the introduction. So uh, before I start today, I wanted to tell you about two things I'm really passionate about, which is food and marketing. And what I wanted to do today, I wanted to combine these two passions and hopefully find something pretty interesting to talk about. So as a child of the 21st century, what I did, I went on the internet, and I'm really glad I did because I came across this really interesting article titled, Take It With A Pinch Of Salt, The Food Marketing Myths We Swallowed Whole. And this article talks a lot about how our perceptions of certain foods have influenced the way we see food today. And not only that, of how these historical campaigns have had such an impact on our economy, which is something I never even realized. Think about relevant examples today. Being a vegetarian or being a vegan has become increasingly easier based on its really increasing popularity in society. And who can forget about the good old Banting diet? The Banting diet has occurred in restaurants worldwide and that iconic red book that sits in our kitchens in South Africa. I know when the Banting diet came out, the cauliflower was this glorified staple food in our kitchen for a while. And I really take my hat off to the marketers of, these, of this concept because changing the world with the way people see food is, is quite difficult and they did it well. And only recently have they come under criticism for its intense fat intake. And I know for one, when Banson came out, I tried it for that feel good fat melter thing. And the only thing it really did for me was break my bank account because let's admit it, it's one of those things that few can afford. <laughs> so, um, so let's talk about um, trends in the 1920s. And we'll start with delicious, delicious bacon. <laughs> and um, this bacon is not only the celebrity of the breakfast plate, but is the result of many memes today, and of course, the glorified restaurant on Bree Street, Bree Street, which opened in its honor. So where exactly did bacon come from? Now, bacon was, um, in the 1920s in America, there was this intelligent man named Edward Bernays. And he was tasked with the, apparently it was quite a hard task back in the day, of increasing bacon consumption in America. Now, believe it or not, Americans used to eat an incredibly light breakfast in the 1920s, which usually consisted of fruits, yogurts, oats, and the occasional coffee. And he, thank God, this guy over here, <laughs> had, <laughs> had an incredible insight into human behavior. And he believed that in order to increase bacon consumption, we have to increase breakfast consumption. So what he did, he got 5,000 doctors to sign this whole petition that eating a hearty breakfast was better than eating a light breakfast, because when you sleep at night, you wake up with less energy, so naturally, a hearty breakfast is better than a light one. And um, so he got these 5,000 doctors to report this, which I'm quite skeptical about. I mean, in the 1920s, 5,000 doctors agreeing on the same thing, not really sure if that's true. Anyway, so they, um, they signed off on this, published the results, and this is um, a very famous campaign that he, he started then, and he ba made Bacon the main player of the real American breakfast. And this campaign was so successful today that it increased bacon consumption by 70%. Now one, one wonders why this was actually so effectful. And I believe that because Edward Bernays had such an incredible insight into human behavior, he, he created this underlying fear in society that no one wants to die and everyone wants to live longer. So if eating a hearty breakfast was better for me, then I'll flip and do it. <laughs> 
So the next thing that was happening during this time is that good old myth about spinach and its iron content. And what happened was a German scientist was tasked with defining how much iron spinach had in it. And because he was so clever, he put the decimal in the wrong place, giving spinach 10 times more iron than it had. But who cares? This pseudoscience, which is fake science, had already got out, marketers grabbed a hold of it, and how's it, Popeye? Um, the next case study I found quite interesting was that it was kind of used to benefit um, a community in California in 1908. Orange juice never really was a thing before this time. And um, the citrus farmers experienced a surplus in oranges and they had to sell these oranges, otherwise they would become bankrupt and insolvent, sell their farms and move on. And what happened was they got these really clever marketers involved who decided let's make a really cheap juice extractor, let's put this health halo around it that, that orange juice is really good for you, get some doctors to sign off and agree, and then therefore comes the classic orange juice. And this was quite beneficial to this community at the time because it really contributed to the local financial growth and obviously it created this whole trend that orange juice is today. Now let's talk about carrots. So I'm sure from personal experience, um, when I was little, my parents told me to eat my carrots uh, for dinner because who would honestly turn down the opportunity to have night vision as these carrots could give you? <laughs> so where was this perception created? Well, I'll tell you. So back in Second World War, carrots were a delicacy. There were lots of things such as carrot jam, carrot curried carrots, even a drink called Carolade, and it was apparently delicious. And so what happened was the British government um, received an oversupply of carrots, and thus they didn't know what to do with it because the appeal was diminishing. So what they did was they, um, they uh, they told everyone that the reason that the RAF's night flying abilities was, was so excellent was because of the carotene in carrots. Sold it to the general public and then everyone started to eat carrots because they were hoping to see better during the blackouts in the war. And the, on, the real reason was not the carotene, it was because of the radars in the airplanes which at that time was highly classified information that no one else could know. So out of all these examples, myths, half-truth, half truths, blatant lies, we have, as marketers have the power to change perceptions and create these global trends that can surpass our lifetime. So basically what I'm trying to say is bacon isn't that great for you, orange juice sometimes has more sugar than coke, Popeye, or well, eating spinach will not turn you into Popeye, and carrots will not give you night vision. So how's that food for thought? Mm -hmm.